Hey everybody, what's up? We're here with a timeless reading, welcome. The first card that we have out is the Fool. I'm seeing you be very, very close here to stepping off of the branch. What I feel drawn to on the full card is how the foot is already off of here. So there's just like one more step that one needs to take to hop off of the branch and then go soaring. And you are going to be going through a door. I see an ace of wands as a door that you go through. It's like an opportunity. See how your energy is very, very focused on this. It can mean too that in order to get over here, in order for me to seize this opportunity, a leap of faith is necessary. I have to leave maybe what I'm comfortable with. I have to step off of what provides me with some sense of security in my head. But that doesn't mean that you won't find security over there because you're going from one branch to another. I think this is more so the possibility of potentially falling or spiraling down. But really, this seems like something that's very close, very within reach for you. And so this actually doesn't feel like a huge leap that you're taking. It doesn't feel like a huge hop that's happening. This feels more so like, I'm ready to leave the nest. I'm going to jump on this next opportunity and see where that branch takes me. Let's see what happens. And because it's an ace, it's filled with the beauty of potential. And the excitement of potential as well. Of you getting to explore something. It definitely feels like the right time to be doing this. Wow. We have Ace of Swords here and we have Hanged Man. When we have Ace of Swords... Oh my gosh, we do not have Ace of Swords. We have Two of Swords here. I wish we had Ace of Swords here. We have Two of Swords here, and what this means is that... Well, actually, when you have Two of Swords in the Hanged Man, it will produce the Ace of Swords. Because it means that you're going to retire what you don't need, and then you'll be able to see things clearly. When we have Two of Swords and we have the Hanged Man, it can mean that because of us having sort of double vision or split vision or we haven't gotten to the bottom of something we haven't gotten to the truth of it we're not seeing the whole thing yet let's see what's blocking this what is right now a barrier for from the ace of swords it can be an old way of thinking an old way of seeing things an old narrative an old perspective block is three of pentacles okay when i'm seeing three of pentacles what this feels like to me is that there may need there may be a need for you to tune in there may be a need to listen there may be a need to embrace a perspective outside of the old narrative that you have The card of Three of Pentacles, it is a card of collaboration. Why it works though is that if you hope to accomplish something and you're working with other energies, even just energies within yourself, what that means is that you have to be open to other perspectives. You have to be willing to listen, you have to be willing to communicate, and you have to be willing to take in new information. So when we have that Ace of Swords there, Basically, Ace of Swords is when we haven't gotten to the pure essence of the truth yet, the Ace of Swords is there and it can feel like, I don't know which way to go. I don't know what to do. I'm not seeing things clearly. I'm not seeing the way clearly. I'm not sure on this decision yet. When we have the Three of Pentacles, it means that we need to work with whatever is getting in the way of us seeing the truth here. What do you need to see? What do you need to see differently? What do you need to evaluate? What do you need to reevaluate? What do you need to let go of? 
because it's blocking you from seeing the truth. It's blocking you from seeing the way. It's blocking you from seeing the path. And the way is there because you have an Ace of Swords there. There's just another one that's, there's another thought going on. There's other thinking that's going on that's getting in the way of you seeing that Ace of Swords. So that's basically where you are as far as getting closer and closer, closer to a breakthrough here. You're so close. We have the Ace of Swords here. We have Seven of Wands. We have Ace of Swords. Like I said, Two Swords and the Hangman is going to produce the Ace of Swords, which it has clearly here. What is before the Ace of Swords is that we have the Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands can be sometimes needing to see if, are you being stubborn? Are you blocking something that you don't actually need to block? And then on the other side of that, because Seven of Wands can sometimes be, Seven of Wands can sometimes be not going down without a fight. And in some some situations, in some ways, that's something that we are benefited by. And then sometimes in other situations, it's something that can sort of hold us back. And it can be about you questioning like, what what are you fighting for? What are you standing up for here? What is your cause here? And then ultimately what Seven of Wands becomes is needing to show up for what's important to you. Maybe sometimes even fighting for what it is that's important to you or not backing down. I see the pure essence of the energy of the Seven of Wands be that when you have something that is what you know within you authentically you need to stand by, no matter what comes through and challenges that, you have to stand within that. Even if you look at the imagery on this card, it's about you standing within your light regardless of what's going on around you. And this feels always like, this card especially in this deck feels like staying true to yourself. Because if you don't, then your fire is gonna go out and you're gonna feel like you fall in line with something that's not authentic to you. So this can even mean having to stand alone if necessary. So weird, when I started this reading, my right ring finger started itching. It's like not, I don't feel it so much anymore, but it was like really a lot when the reading started. Seven of Wands and Ace of Swords can also be breaking through some type of defense that you had to, like even a defense mechanism. This can be like a barrier that you're breaking through, but I see it more as more of like a defense that can be broken down. Or if anything was covering you in some type of way, it can be like taking that off, like exposing what needs to be exposed anything that is not real for you like anything that's not true for you it can be a time when anything that's covering you or anything that you're doing or any like pretending that's happening it can be the shedding of that and the realizing with ace of swords
Okay, something really is coming together here, I am seeing. This looks like there's a discussion before something happens. This Ace of Cups is gonna be a new chapter. Ace of Cups. But before we have Ace of Cups, we have Three of Cups. And this is feeling like a discussion that's happening before we go into that chapter. I even see a plan that's being made. This feels like before, before you, as the little chick, as the little bird, whatever kind of bird it is in the Fool card, before you take this leap of faith, it feels like there's a discussion that's happening. And the nature of the discussion when you have Three of Cups, this would be with beings that you feel like are on the same wave as you are, at least for these purposes anyway. So that it feels like there's a support that you have because I even get the notion of there being like this plan or there being a conversation like you're going to be jumping off of here and then you're going to be going over there and that's what's going to be happening but seeing on a lower branch these other energies below you I feel like there's support even if you like if you need a, a boost or something like that I see there be energies beneath you that it's like there's no way that you're not going to get over to to this ace of wands and the ace of cups so even if like your wings you can do this on your own but if they happen to falter at all I'm seeing you're going to have support push you the rest of the way so you're definitely not alone you're not by yourself doing this i'm definitely seeing you have support with this and like there's no way that you're not gonna make it because as i said before i think that you can do this independently as the fool but what i'm also seeing is that there is support below you so what that means is that if you jump off and you're like I don't know if I'm gonna make it or like your wings stop working or whatever. I'm seeing there be support directly underneath you that like bumps you the rest of the way. It like supports you the rest of the way. So no matter what, you're not gonna fail doing this. So like it's seen as being like a leap of faith, but technically it doesn't feel like it because I'm seeing you're gonna make it no matter what. Like there's no way that you won't, unless you don't jump. That's the only way that you won't make it over to this. opportunity door however you want to see it and we also have three out of the four aces here as well so this is a lot of new chapter new beginning energy new venture getting in the way who do we have here we have a queen of cups above the queen of cups is the two of swords what this can mean is that a choice needs to be made when we have two of swords it does indicate that there is logic that's needed here but when we have the two of cups when we have the queen of cups especially when we have the six of cups this can be somebody that is bathed in and identified with a sense of nostalgia and like allegiance to the past in a way where it can be difficult to keep up with current times. And what I feel too within the reading, having the, the block be or what needs to be worked with in order to get to that Ace of Swords where we're seeing things clearly, as it relates to the two of swords that we have here, it means that um, when we have two of swords and we have queen of cups, especially linked with hanged man and six of cups, this can be seeing things as they were 
to the point where you're no longer seeing things as they are and they're not being a receptivity to the current information. And that's what can get in the way of seeing things. Like my, my memories of that doesn't allow me to see it now because I'm living in that past moment rather than living in the now. And it can really be something that gets in the way and doesn't allow us to see it. And ultimately something that holds us back from making decisions. I feel like you have to do something that's scary. Yeah, this feels like a not wanting to let go of the past. Because that's where I'm seeing the anxiety come from. I'm seeing the Nine of Swords looking at the Six of Cups. This feels like wanting to carry like Santa's bag of presents behind you, but it's like all your past memories. And this feels like it's really inhibiting something from currently going on and you seeing clearly currently because of having to like drag that behind you and not wanting to let go of it. And this doesn't mean you forget about your past entirely. This is just what is carrying over and getting in the way of you seeing things clearly. That's what needs to be let go of. It's not that you need to forget about everything. It's that what is blocking you seeing things clearly is the Six of Cups. And this is how things were. This has to do specifically with the past. That can mean that you maybe you have somebody in front of you that has changed and you keep like the same narrative in your head about this person when they're somebody different now. But they're at that attachment to like, oh, but we used to get along so well back then, or even we used to fight so much back then, and then not allowing them to be who they are in that moment. And you can also be doing that to yourself too. Maybe you're not allowing yourself to be who you are in this moment. Because maybe you're knowing now that something is ringing true for you and you need to stand up within that, but it can be something that's terrifying because then there's that releasing of the past that's happening. And then how are things going to change? What's going to happen then? And that's where this is like a fear motivated thing and how that comes into play here and how that blocks you from seeing. Because when you get down to it, you already have the truth, but we have these things that our ego does in order to protect us from having to realize this, this scary thing, which that's just more of the ego anyway. Ego creates itself and then protects its creation. Wow, Nine of Swords and the Tower. This can be going through a very terrifying or stressful situation and having to really channel your attitude that's going to address this and do it head on what needs to be done here this even feels like heading right into the change like heading right into maybe even what you perceive as being the chaos the revolution. I feel like you're going to be standing strong within your Mars energy here and there's going to be a tower because of it, but I, we're ending with the 10 of cups on the bottom of the deck. So this shows that if you really show up and you stand within your light and you just like let it blaze that 
something really miraculous is going to happen because when we end here with the Ten of Cups, what that means is that something very, very satisfying comes from this. And it's something that you feel within you, that you feel connected with, and that you will feel very happy with. The word flourishing is coming through. And this also feels too like a breakthrough socially, collectively. This can also be with, um, with like a friendship or a relationship even can be part of this. The only thing that would keep you away from this next chapter feels like living in the past. That's the only thing that would keep you away from the current times. And this can even be like a pleasant thing of the past that you like to dwell within because of the anxiety of like what's going to happen presently if I live my life presently in this regard. But this can definitely be your judgment being clouded because of seeing something in a very nostalgic way and not seeing it. Sometimes it's like I'm not seeing the whole thing because I'm only seeing like those parts that I liked of it especially when we have Neptune here with Hanged Man. This can be like, I'm only seeing it and remembering it how I want to be seeing it and remembering it. I'm not going to see all of that other stuff. I'm not going to acknowledge all that other stuff. This can kind of be like a little bit of a toxic positivity here. And when I say toxic, I mean more so like it's not real. It's not realistic. If you're only telling half of the story here, that is what keeps us from seeing the truth and then being able to make a clear choice and to see things clearly. Like there is a need for you to be incisive here and there can be a lacking of that when we have two of swords and hanged man and queen of cups and six of cups. This is more so like I'm just tuning into the pleasant stuff feeling wise and then when it comes to all of this stuff that I don't want to see, don't want to acknowledge, I'm just going to pretend that that's not there but then be confused about what choice to make because I'm not really telling myself the truth here. We're not really honoring myself, we're not really honoring what's going on in the situation. So then when we get over to like the third the third and final part of the show like the third act over here i'm seeing there be the seven of wands and i'm seeing it be connected with nine of swords and what this can mean is that there is a need like you are being called to show up in like full authenticity as bright as can be just completely as yourself regardless of what else is going on around you, even though you can feel terrified about what that's going to mean to allow yourself to change in this way, which it's like, you're not changing by showing up within your authenticity. I feel like stuff has changed and you may not be showing up totally in that way. And now can be a time where you do that. So this can be like, oh, it, it's so nice when I just show up in this way and then everybody gets along with one another or we can keep things cordial, but then you can feel like there's part of yourself that you're not really expressing. And so this can be a time where you're like, nope, full blast, I'm gonna totally just be myself here. And it doesn't mean in like a crass way or needing to be imprudent. This is more so you showing up and just like being honest with yourself about about like your feelings and your expression and your behavior and not making choices that don't really honor how you feel. So it can be like a time when you actually step up and do that when you feel like that's important and that is going to be your Mars being activated and what that means is Mars has to do with 
with taking control of things and it's quick, precise action that we do. And it's Mars is also a catalyst for change too. And this would be necessary because what you're going to find is that if you've been not totally like being yourself and being true to yourself and true to the reflection of expression, what happens is stuff starts being built up within your life that feels inauthentic to you. And that's where we feel that tension and that sense of turmoil. And that's why we feel that split. So all that you're doing is just the stuff that you've been like cloaking with. You're just taking that off now. So it's not even that like you've changed. This is more so like you're just being yourself now and you're going to show up in that way. And when that happens and when the tower happens, it means that all of that stuff that was built basically, um, what's the phrase? There is a phrase that I'm looking for here. False pretenses. All of the stuff that's been built from a false pretense because of not showing up like totally truly in, in the way that is true to you, the tower hits because it's just those specific things that end up falling away. But they're supposed to because that's not aligned. Because that's not true to you. So it's not a bad thing when the tower comes out. It means that if you're trying to be like vibrating in a way or like showing up in a way that's not true to your energy and then things are invited into your life or built within your life that aren't true to that, in the moment when you step into your authenticity and show up, all of the stuff that no longer aligns with your authenticity falls away and that's a good thing, that purging that happens. Because it means you're not going to have stuff around you that's not supposed to be there. It will just be that stuff that aligns with you. That stuff that matches with you. So you'll be much better off for it anyway. But that, that can be scary being like, if I really show up like this, I'm going to lose that like fake connection that I have. And even though it's fake, it can still, or like not, not as it appears to be. Because like who's to say it's all fake? It really just depends like how deep into this you are. What's going to happen is that this stuff that you can be holding on for a sense of security, but that you there's not that real sense of connection or fulfillment within your life, it ends up dissolving, ends up sliding away as it's supposed to be purged. But this sentimentality here about things, which I think poses as sentimentality, but it's really just a fear of change and of showing up within your authenticity. Because what does that mean then? It means that some people maybe aren't gonna like that. It means maybe some relationships are gonna change or maybe dissolve completely. And when we feel sentimental about something, we can do anything to keep that from happening if that's what we're motivated by the fear of change. I feel like that about I feel like we've gotten to a place where this feels clear now. What I'm also seeing is that there are new, there's new stuff coming in now. Like I'm seeing new relationships. I'm seeing new support systems. I'm seeing that be all about what's going on while there's also a purging of things that are no longer in alignment when you're showing up authentically. When you're just being yourself, that's it. When you're not modifying things depending on who's around. 
you know, within reason, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you, you don't pay attention at all to the person that you're talking to, but this is more so like if you're doing things from a place that when you really look at it, it technically is manipulating the perception of you rather than just being yourself, this can be a time when you check that stuff. But you have to want the truth. That's what it comes down to. If you want to not be totally in the truth with yourself, this is not something that's going to be thrown in your face right now. This is something that will be able to go on like this. You have to want the truth to be able to see it. It won't be forced upon you. That's not how this energy is working. But if you want that sense of authentic connection where you actually feel a sense of resonance with who it is that you're connecting with, it means you're going to have to allow the change to occur. It means you're going to have to let the stuff that's not authentically resonating with you to fall away. Because if you're holding on to that and you're still keeping up the charade, it keeps away the stuff that you would genuinely connect with. And so you take those opportunities away from yourself. So that's why this, there's nothing wrong with nostalgia. There's nothing wrong with having past memories and getting enjoyment out of it. But it's when you're holding on to something and it's keeping you from living your life presently and enjoying things presently that it becomes an issue and it creates conflict within our lives. So I, I do even feel like there are some things that you've been holding on to that like you don't even know how it is that things would change. You just know that things could potentially be different than if you were really just to like stand up and like be your truest self here. You know that there would be some type of change and there's definitely this I don't even want to look at that. I just want to like go into a safe space where nothing ever changes and nothing can be taken away or nothing can be shifted and everything just stays exactly the same. And working with that part of yourself to not escape, to not run away, but to be here and move through this and to be standing in your truth with this. And that is how you cultivate your 10 of cups. That's what comes from this. So you can look at something and be like oh no it's all falling away but the that stuff that is supposed to stick that won't ever fall away the tower can't touch those things the tower only comes through and knocks out the stuff that is like the rotten pieces of things the stuff that is not stable the disjointed stuff and so even though it can like look pretty on the outside it has like no substance within and the tower comes through and that's what gets knocked away. It's not everything. It's only those things. And depending on how far we've gone into stuff, there can be a lot that's knocked over. If we haven't gone that far into like veiling ourselves, it won't be as much that's being knocked over, but it really just depends. And it's not like you decide one day I'm just gonna cloak myself entirely. This is a thing that can happen gradually where we get like more and more out of touch with ourselves and in this moment of coming back, it is a time where there can be a lot of change that happens because we feel the sense of inspiration. I mean, we're starting off with Uranus. That is the most, I'm gonna march to the beat of my own drum energy out of all of, out of, all of the archetypes, out of all of the energies. And then when you have that paired with Mars, with the tower, it's you taking action in a way that is authentic to you because you feel inspired by your authenticity. And what is in the middle of it? What do we have to cut through? Neptune. You have to cut through the illusion. Where am I not being totally honest with myself? Where am I acting? And that doesn't feel true to me. And so that is the process that's taking place. And this is how you're going to cultivate that sense of connection that you want and the opportunities where there is that sense of connection. And it's as easy as staying true to yourself and living within your light honestly.
this feels like there's going to be a networking slash social breakthrough for you where there is going to be there this can be about a sense of community that you're going to be gathering around you this can be friends this can be it looks like there's some type of networking social support something of that nature it is going to feel very much in tune in rhythm with where you are right now within your life and resonating with that so it will feel current to you because i'm seeing that be like what is seeking because i even feel like this nostalgia like it's not as filled by it anymore even though it can feel very scary to allow what needs to happen to happen here i see there being this i want to move towards the ace of cups like i'm looking for that sense of connection like that's what i need so you can know on a heart level like on a soul level that's what you are craving and that's what this whole move is about All right, my friends, we're gonna leave the reading here. I would like to thank everyone for connecting. Thank you for tuning in. I am sending everybody love and I hope to catch you guys next time.